Hey, I'm Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com. Today we're looking at the new features in Lightroom Classic 2026. And this is also known as Lightroom Classic 15 release. And by the way, a lot of these features in Lightroom Classic are also in Lightroom Desktop. Let me know in the comments underneath which one you use. Are you using Classic or are you using Lightroom? Even though they're getting more and more alike. Let's jump into the new features. So why don't we start with what is probably the biggest new feature inside of Lightroom, and that is the assisted culling. This helps us to sort through our photographs and save us a ton of time. So if you're shooting groups of people, portraits, or anything like that, where you get hundreds of photos of people, this can help by using AI to analyze the images. So the first thing that happens is you're gonna choose your folder, and then you're gonna go into the assisted culling. Now it says early access, this is Lightroom's kind of word for beta. It means it's here, it's inside of Lightroom, but they're probably still working on it and it could be some changes later, but we get to use it now. All right, so there's things we can look for. Let's look at something like say select focus. And by the way, once you start selecting these, the first thing that happens is it'll go up here, you see a bar, it's analyzing the images. Now I've already gone through this folder so you don't have to wait for that. But you will, you're best to just kind of wait for that to finish and then you know all the photos are analyzed and now we can sort them out by different criteria. So we're looking at, we say, select focus. So we can choose the sensitivity. If I go to the left, that means you're going to get away with a lot more. If you go to the right, only the very, very sharpest photos are going to be included. And if you roll over, you'll see a score there. That's a score of 45. And this one's a score of 100, meaning this one's going to be sharp. Now, the eyes are not great on there. We'll get to that in a second. Sometimes you can get to these where they say they're not sharp. Well, sometimes they are. So let's just bring it back a little bit to around about the middle, and you're going to see the ones that fail and pass. So right now it's saying this one here failed. Let's have a look at it. Yep, that is definitely out of focus. Same with this one. Yep. Definitely out of focus. And all I'm doing at this point here is I'm just popping the light meter. I'm just trying to get the light setting. So I'm not even trying to focus. So this is a good way to just kind of get rid of those test shots where you're trying to get things going. The next thing we can do is, hey, it might be in focus, but are the eyes in focus? And once again, we can choose the sensitivity. And then we can project photos without eyes. Now, depending on what kind of shot you're doing, you may turn this on or off. If you're looking for portrait, where you want them looking at the camera, this is great. But maybe you're doing commercial work where some of the actors are not necessarily looking at the camera. But if they do, we can also choose, hey, let's just have the ones with the eyes open. And as you can see here, we can reject them, the photos, without people's eyes. And we can reject that can't tell. That's where it's not sure. So it's kind of like, mm, I think it is, I think it isn't. You can choose to accept or reject those. So based on these settings, we can start to cull these down. And the ones with the little X's are the ones that are not going to be accepted. That one's soft. That one's soft. So we can see it's doing a pretty good job. Now, there's other options we have here. Documents and receipts. I don't know about you, but quite often I'm photographing this, particularly when I'm on a mobile phone. You know, I've got all kinds of things I'm just kind of photographing. But then we've got misfires. You know, your, that shot of your foot or your leg when you accidentally hit the shutter button. Um, and then exposure issues. So if I've got problems with exposure, that can show up as well. Now we can scroll through here and we can look at the photos and see which ones passed or didn't pass and roll over and get this score out of 100. So 100 means, you know, really, really good. But rather than checking here, we can just say, hey, where's the selects? And we could click the view and we can see the selects. These are all the ones we decided to keep. The rejects are the ones we didn't want to keep. So we can look at these and say, okay, these are not good. Well, well, why are they not good? Let's have a look. So we roll over this one. Subject focus is good. Eye focus is good, but the eyes are not open. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, she's not looking at the camera. Let's have a look at another one like that. The eyes are closed. Yep, definitely got that right. Here we go. And so it's doing a good job of finding that. But sometimes you might have one, like maybe here, we might want to keep this. Even though her eyes are closed, her eyes are intentionally closed. Everything is sharp and in focus. In a situation like that, what we can do is we can right click and we can mark as a select. 
So we can always override these. So it's a good idea to go through, check those photos, and make sure that you're not necessarily throwing away any bad photos. And here's definitely some misfires here. Misfires, exposure issues, and roll over, and you can see what's going on. This photo appears to be underexposed. It sure is. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to the selects. And then there's different things that we could do with these. We can start to go under Organize Results, hit Batch Actions. And in here, we can apply flags. We can add to collections. Notice as we click on here, more options become available. So we can do things with the selects and the rejects. All right, so we have things like, you know, the order stacks, but I probably have a better example. Let's go under here, you know, a lot more variety of shots in this particular shoot. Now, I wanted to show you the auto stacking, but notice it's grayed out. And that's grayed out because we're in a collection set. So if we wanted to go to an individual collection here, we can go here and now we can choose auto stack. So we can do it by time. And this is really useful because sometimes, you know, sometimes you get into a rhythm and you're shooting and everything is going fine. But then sometimes you might stop to reposition yourself or reposition the model or adjust a light. So we can adjust this and say, you know, if it's more than 20 seconds. So within a session, you might have some different shoots where you stop in between, you know, change some things. And this is definitely going to get this right there. Look at that. The other way we can do this is to stack by visual similarity. And right now it's just quickly analyzing these pictures. So, you know, some here with, with a wig on, some with her hair up, some with her hair down, you know, we got close ups and it can start to sort these into different groups for you that can really save you a lot of time when it comes to sorting through these photographs. Now, another place that you're going to find these is when you're importing. So on import, you're going to see the ability to do assisted culling. So you can actually do this at the point of import and not even bring in those bad photos. So here's a great addition to the remove tool, and that's to include shadows and reflections. I don't know how many times I've shared pictures and people have been like, what about the shadow? Well, now it gets taken care of. So we're going to jump in here, go to the remove tool. So what we do is we make a ring around the area we roughly want to select, release. Notice it selects all of him, but it also gets the shadow. And typically, no, I would not remove the cowboy from the photo, but I just want to demonstrate how this feature works. And uh, this is a pretty good image to do it with. And if we look at that, there we go. And if you don't like it, we have two more variations. We can choose the second variation. Or the third variation. I think the second variation looks better with that chair in the background. But as you can see there, that really works well now, getting all the shadows. All right, the next one is dust removal. We've already seen this in Camera Raw, but now it's in Lightroom. So what we're going to do is go to the Remove tool. And then under the Remove tool, we can see Distraction Removal. We're going to click apply for dust. Now it's going to analyze the image and it's going to find the areas of dust. And we can see these little spots appear exactly where they are. And so we can see there they are. And if we apply visualize spots, we can see our spots. Notice that they've been removed. If we take apply off, look at that. There's those dust spots there. And so we can automatically remove them. Now, if there's one that you don't want to remove, you can just hold down the Alt or the Option key and roll over and click. And if there's areas that you do want to add it, you can just simply just click to apply it. And so this is nice to have these. So also we're not just chasing the dust on our monitors that's there sometimes. You, you know what I'm talking about. And the next one I want to show you is reflection removal. You may have seen this before, but it's actually got an update in the algorithm now and it works better. And it actually also works with some of the specular highlights now. So you're going to find this under the remove tool and under distraction removal, you're going to see reflections and you just click it analyzes the image. And as you see there, it removes the reflections 
and it also increases the contrast in the area where the you know it was kind of getting that glare and it makes it look like there's no glass there at all if we look at this before and after you can see we can adjust the amount and if we take it to zero that's the original photo and we can go to the left of course and show the reflection go all the way we see just the reflection so there's all reflection there's no reflection and in between another great new feature is the color variance inside of point color say for example i've got this photo of the super bloom but notice how all the stalks and the color of the flowers are kind of flowing together maybe i want a little bit more separation so if we go down to the color and we're going to use the color mixer and you'll see point color grab the eyedropper and then let's go over some of the green make sure that we're highlighting it and now what we can do is we, we can separate it we can move this hue away notice as we start to move it towards the greens now this is where the variance comes in if i move the variance towards the right it causes much more separation between the colors see that if i move it to the left it causes the colors to blend together so if i'm moving it here in the left notice it adjusts the entire image move it to the right and notice now we're just getting those areas that we want to get and the variance might be a little strong you might want to bring it back a little bit but when you're doing stuff like landscape work and you want to cause that separation that's a really good tool now there's another way to use it so for example we're using it on portraits we can use it to get rid of any discoloration in the skin in this case we don't really have any issues but we've got just you know maybe just a little bit of reddish like on the nose here and on the chin and let me show you how that would work so we're going to go there and we're going to find that area for a little bit of the red tone in it and we're going to click now watch what happens when i use the variance as i move it to the left notice how all the colors just kind of smudge together and as we go to the right it separates them more so we can use this on portraits just a little bit to the left here maybe give it a slight little boost of saturation a little bit of luminance and as you can see it works really nice in evening out the color in skin so once again as we go to the left it makes the colors all go together as we go to the right causes more separation a new landscape filter has been added for snow so if we go under the develop and we're going to grab the mask and then under the landscape mask notice that snow has now been added so we can create a mask with that snow and we can adjust it independently some other notable new features are one is color management so if we go under the lightroom settings here one of the things you'll notice now is we have more options so under these settings here in the past we only had pro photo rgb as well as adobe rgb now we have srgb support display p3 and also rec 2020 which is really good for video we also have some different hdr formats available so we can output an hdr as well and another great feature when we're working with video as well as slideshows check this out when we export them And previously we were limited to hd now we can export our videos and slideshows at full 4k so as you can see there's lots of exciting new features inside of lightroom classic don't forget you can follow along with the written steps on photoshopcafe.com and that also covers all the new releases including the brand new release of photoshop 2026 check it out here if you want to see what the new features are drop a comment underneath let me know your favorite new feature inside of lightroom and if you're new welcome to the cafe hit that subscribe button turn on notifications and you won't miss any of my weekly tutorials and until next time i'll see you at the cafe